Grade 5 Math, number 36, Problem Solving, Add and Subtract Money. We can use the strategy Make a Table to help us solve addition or subtraction decimal problems. Tala had $536.27 in her bank account last week. Yesterday, she paid her electric bill of $47.63 and her car payment of $405.12. Tomorrow she will deposit her paycheck of $882.14. What will her checking account balance be then? Well, that's a lot of information, isn't it? So, if we make a table that looks like the balance section of a checkbook, it'll help us figure it out. Here's the balance that she started with. Here's her electric bill in the payment and fee withdrawal section. If we subtract this, then we'll get a new balance right here. Her, here's her car payment in the payment and fee withdrawal section. We could subtract that from the new balance and get another new balance. Here's her paycheck. We add this to the other balance and we'll get a balance for right here, and then we can find out if she's got enough money for her rent, right? All right, let's try it. So the first thing we've got is 3 from 7. Well, that's 4, right? And then 2, take away 6, we can't do it, so we have to borrow from the 6, and it becomes a 5, right? And that becomes a, a 12. 12 take away 6 is 6. We put our decimal point. Now this is a 5, but we need to take 7 away. So we need to borrow it from the 3, don't we? Okay, the 3 becomes a 2. The 5 becomes a 15. 15 take away 7 is 8. 2 take away 4, we can't do that. So now we have to borrow it from the 5, it becomes a 4. And the 2 becomes a 12. 12 take away 4 is 8. And we drop the 4 down. Wow, that was a lot of borrowing, wasn't it? So now we've got $488.64, and we need to take away the car payment, okay? 4, take away 2, is 2. 6, take away 1, is 5. We put our decimal point. 8, take away 5, is 3. 8, take away 0, is 8. And the 4s cancel each other out, so now she's got $83.52, okay? But now she got her paycheck. Thank goodness, right? So we're going to add the paycheck to this balance because now we're going back up because she got paid. See, it's a credit. 2 and 4 is 6. 5 and 1 is 6. We put our decimal point. 3 and 2 is 5. 8 plus 8 is 16. We carry the 1 and put the 6 down. 1 and 8 is 9. So now we see she has $965.66. So... Now we need to do the rent, because the rent is a payment, isn't it? All right, so these are zeros, so the 66 is just going to drop down. We keep our decimal points nice and pretty and straight. 5 take away 5 is 0. 6 take away 7, we can't, so we need to borrow it from the 9. It becomes an 8, and that becomes a 16, right? Do you know what 16 take away 7 is? If you said 9, you're right. And now the 8s leave nothing there, right? Because they cancel each other out. So after paying all her bills, she now has $90.66. See? So yeah, she did have enough to pay her rent, didn't she? So do you see how the checkbook worked? Every time she got a bill that she paid, she subtracted it and got a new balance. And then she'd pay another bill and subtract it and get a new balance. Then when she got her paycheck... She would deposit it, and her, she would add it, and her balance would go back up. And then she would pay a bill and subtract it, and her balance would go back down. And by keeping track of her balance in her checking account, she knows that she can't go to the store and buy a $100 dress, can she? Because she doesn't have the money. She has to think about, does she have money for food or gas for her car? So she can't just blow that money, can she? She's got to hang on to it. All right. A balloon salesman was at the carnival. He charged $2.25 for each balloon. 
how much would it cost for Emma to buy seven balloons? Well, remember, we're doing the strategy make a table. So here's our balloon salesman. Emma wants to buy seven balloons, so we made a table. One balloon is $2.25. Two balloons would be $2.25 more than this. See? Two plus two is four, and 25 and 25 is 50. See? Because it's a benchmark for money. We add another 225 for three balloons and get 675. We add another 225 for four balloons and get $9. We add another 225 for five balloons and now we have 1125. And by the time we get to seven balloons, we now see it'll cost $15.75 to buy the seven balloons. See? So we just made a table going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down. And then we increased it by $2.25 for each one because we were adding on another balloon. See? All right. Bob needs exact change to buy soda from a machine. It costs $1.75. So what are the money co coin combinations he could use? So here he's got a dollar and a dollar, but it says he needs exact change. So maybe it won't take both dollars. It might take one. And he's got a dime here and a dime here and a nickel and a quarter and a quarter and a penny and another nickel. So this is what he's got. What combinations could he do use? Well, we made a table of money. Here's a dollar. That's the paper dollars. Here's half dollars. That's 50 cents. Well, he doesn't have any of those, does he? So we can't use those combinations because he doesn't have any half dollars. All right? He could have. If he did have half dollars, he could have used two of them to make a dollar and then three quarters, but he doesn't have that. So, this one won't work because it meant he would have to use half dollars. So, this one's out. This one he would have to use half dollars. So, this one's out. And this one's out because he'd have to use half dollars. And he doesn't have any. He could use seven quarters. Does he have seven quarters? No, he's only got two. See? So what combinations could he use? See, there's still more combinations that we could have put on this chart. He could have even used, even have used 175 pennies. He could use one paper dollar, seven dimes, and one nickel. He could use one paper dollar and three quarters. Actually, what he can use, if you look at this, he can use a paper dollar, these two quarters to make a dollar fifty altogether, and then a dime would be a dollar sixty, another dime would be a dollar seventy, and then the nickel would be one seventy five. So he would have used a dollar, twenty five cent piece, twenty five cent piece, a ten cent piece. Whoops, got to keep my decimal straight, right? And a five cent piece, and that would have equaled the dollar seventy five because that's what he's got. See. So there's all different combinations. The chart would have been way, way down on my floor if I actually did it all, because there's so many combinations. You know, because you could, he could have even done all nickels and five pennies. I mean, there's so many combinations. All right? But you could make a chart, a table, to show all the different combinations. You might want to make one yourself to see how many different combinations you could come up with. All right? So sometimes when you're trying to solve a word problem or a problem with money, if you make a chart or a table, it'll really help you. Okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.